Welcome to the Exploratory. If you've written tests or scripted an API workflow, maybe you're opening up each request and hitting send, and then opening up the next request and hitting send again. It's really convenient to walk through requests like that in Postman, but in this video, we'll learn about three different ways to run collections in Postman so you can automate testing in other API workflows. Let's get started in Postman. I have a collection called Testing Flow for Light. If you want to follow along at home, you can fork this collection to your own workspace. So normally I would open up my collection, load up a call, and then maybe tweak some parameters, hit send, and see what I get back on the bottom here. But what if I want to run all the calls in this collection or this folder? Select what you want to run, like this collection, and look for the Run button. This is going to open up a new tab called the runner, and you can see pre-selected is all the requests in that collection. But maybe I only want to run the first request and then these three right here. Or maybe I want to reorder my API calls. Whatever you want to do, you can configure that here. I'm going to run every request in this collection and then hit the blue run button. I can see my collection running, all the requests, as well as the tests that I wrote. And I can see that I already have one failed test. So let's filter on the failure. And I don't really remember what this test was, so I'm going to drill down into this API call and take a look at the request and response details to figure out exactly what made my test fail. So I'm looking at all my um, requests here, but I can also view a more abbreviated summary like this. And maybe I make some changes to my requests or maybe I add some tests. I can always run that again. So the collection runner is really good to help, to help um, in local development while you're writing tests, but also for any kind of API workflow. Like for example, if I have a collection that creates a database and then seeds the database with information, I can come here and run that collection in its entirety to handle my setup. Now let's run our collection from the command line. To run the same collection, I'm gonna to go to the overflow menu and select export and I can export my collection as a JSON file. I've already done this, so I'll X out of here. And to run our collection, we will use Newman, Postman's open source command line runner. And it's a node package, so I'm going to need to install the Newman Node.js package to my local machine or wherever I wanna run the collection using Newman. I've already done this, so I'm gonna go over to my terminal And if I list out the contents of my directory, I can see that I've already exported this JSON file to my local directory. So the command is gonna be Newman run, and it's gonna be the name of that JSON file. And if I hit enter, I see a bunch of tests running, a bunch of requests running rather that contain tests that I've written. And it looks like I have a couple of failures once again. And at the very end, Newman will summarize that collection run <clears throat> for me in this table. So I can see that there's 78 assertions and two failures. So the syntax that I had used was Newman run the name of the collection, but if I wanted to export the environment, if I had one, I could go ahead and add it like this using the dash E option. And by default, um, Newman will use the CLI output that we just went through here, but there's also another helpful option, dash R, that I can use for custom reporters. So if my boss doesn't wanna run Newman in their command line, maybe they want to consume a nice HTML file that they can view in their browser, uh, a very popular reporter is HTML extra. Okay. What if I don't want to um, run a static file? 
So I've exported the collection file as JSON, and maybe I have team members working on it. Maybe I want to add extra tests. Um, you don't have to export that JSON file every single time. You can also call that um, collection using the Postman API. So let's go back to Postman, and I'll drop a link to the Postman API as well. So the Postman API allows you to access all of your Postman data, like collections. So here I have a, a request loaded up to retrieve a single collection. And I just have placeholders here for now. But for example, if my API key for Postman was um, 1234, and if my collection that I'm trying to receive, retrieve rather, is <clears throat> 5678, I can copy this to my clipboard. And in my terminal, previously I had Newman run the name of that collection JSON file, but I can also call my API like this. In this case, if I hit um, enter one, two, three, four, as my API key isn't gonna cut it, but this is how you would be running Newman to dynamically retrieve the latest version of your Postman API that you have saved. So this is how you run collections from your command line. Uh, and Newman is a node package. That means you can import it into a script that you're running. There's also a Docker image. So if you're running your tests in a container, you can um, bring Newman into that container and then run it as a command just like this in your Docker file. Similarly, if you have a continuous integration pipeline, you would install Newman in your CI environment and then include this as one of the start scripts. Next, let's schedule our collection to run on Postman Cloud. To do that, we'll set up a monitor. For the collection that we want to schedule, go to the overflow menu and select monitor collection. Let's call this health check. And we can select an environment if we want to. The most important thing on this tab is going to be scheduling the frequency of your monitor. So for example, if you want to run it every few minutes, or maybe just every day. There's a couple options here to receive notifications for run failures or errors. Um, I already have a monitor created, so I won't create another one here. Let's go under monitors in the sidebar. And I've already scheduled, it looks like a weekly health check. And here's where I can take a look at the history of runs that are occurring from Postman Cloud. So if I select this last run, I can drill down and this looks very similar to what we saw earlier in the collection runner. And if I want to do more debugging, I can go to the console to see some log statements or drill down a little bit deeper into the network calls. So we talked about monitors as a way to schedule collection runs for running from Postman servers, but there's one other bonus way I'll tell you about, and that is using webhooks. So webhooks behind the scenes, under the hood, is essentially a Postman monitor. And the way you create a webhook is, once again, using the Postman API. Um, you can create a webhook and then call that webhook. So you can define your own events to trigger this collection run using a webhook. I won't go deeper into monitoring and webhooks, but I will drop links to videos that go a little bit deeper into each topic. And that's it. We talked about a few different ways to run collections. The first way is using the runner in the Postman app. This allows you to run a collection or folder of requests. Maybe you just want to run it one time, or maybe you're still developing your API workflow. The second way is using Newman from your command line. This is also how you integrate with your CI pipeline. The third way is scheduling collections to run from Postman servers using monitors. And the last way, which is essentially monitors under the hood, is using Postman webhooks. This allows you to define events to trigger a collection run. And you can also pass a payload through to that collection run. I'll drop a link to some additional resources in the description below. Let us know how you're running collections.